It's the flamethrower, it's the world of spin, assault cannon totem, land raider redeemer. After falling short on two hobby projects in a row, the channel really needs a win. And there couldn't be a more apt vehicle of choice on the road to hobby redemption than the mighty Land Raider Redeemer. The first three letters of Redeemer are R-E-D for red, which is the prime colours of the Blood Angels chapter of Space Marines, my favoured chapter. I just have to honour the chapter by fulfilling my oath and doing my best work. There can be no better choice than the Sons of Sanguinius to push back against a resurgent High Fleet Leviathan. With our oaths of moment out of the way, let's bring this ancient relic of the Blood Angels chapter into glorious existence. Okay, let's see what we have to work with. Yep, just as I remember. Half built, half base coated and in sub assemblies. What a mess! The first thing we need to do is account for all the parts and see how they all fit together and then formulate a loose plan going forward. Okay, all the parts are accounted for, I have my bearings, the next step is to finish the base coning on the model, leaving it in sub-assemblies and taking it over to the airbrush to give it a full spray of Mephiston Red. Once I got the model to the airbrushing booth, I realised the error of my ways and ended up dry fitting the main tank hull. You might have noticed that I haven't used a Zenithal highlight for this model. The primary reason for this is for the sake of consistency, as the rest of my Blood Angels army didn't use one, and because I wanted a rich uniform red. Going forward I'm not going to use the airbrush to apply volumetric highlights on the large flat panels either. My personal experience when using the airbrush to create gradations of colour on large flat panels is that it can sometimes make the flat panels look washed out like plastic or fibreglass that has faded in the sun. Of course this is a personal taste thing and maybe in the future I'll have a change of heart. Hell, you can even try to change my mind in the comments. But for today, we're going with a uniform base coat of Mephiston Red. Painting this Land Raider in Blood Angels colours has really reignited my excitement for 40k and I can't wait to get this mechanical beast onto the table and roast some bugs. I am a massive Blood Angels fanboy going all the way back to 2nd edition 40k, which was released in 1993. But the theme of Blood Angels fighting Tyranids goes back even further than that. The original Space Hulk board game was released in 1989 and depicted a squad of Blood Angels Terminators in a vicious close quarters fight against a horde of gene stealers. Over two decades later in 2014 came the excellently illustrated and truly epic Shield of Baal campaign series set in the Cryptus system that told of the initial incursion by High Fleet Leviathan into territory long watched over by the Blood Angels chapter. Then recently we had the PC game Battle Sector again depicting Blood Angels against the High Fleet Leviathan. Take it fire! No, 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 no. Oh no, that's preposterous! <laughs> we shouldn't neglect to mention the great Warhammer TV series Angels of Death which focused on a Blood Angel confrontation against Gene Stealer Colts. And finally, the excellent Dante series of novels by Guy Haley, especially the second book in the series, Devastation of Baal, which told the story of the final desperate battle for the Blood Angels homeworld of Baal against a rampant and all-devouring High Fleet Leviathan. With all the airbrushing done, it's finally time to put this beast of a tank together. Now, I actually think this is the most difficult part of the entire process because you've got to get everything lined up and glued into place. So I would suggest just taking your time, being careful with this stage because once they're glued together, you'll need a hacksaw to get them apart. Wish me luck. I was dreading gluing on the tracks, but they were surprisingly straightforward. These grooves allow the large pieces to slot in, which prevents misalignment. I had a little trouble getting the top section of the tank to sit flush 
due to the area that separates the back engine compartment with the main compartment sticking out a little bit too much at the top. I sanded it right down until I could get it to fit nice and snugly. I then applied plastic cement with a toothpick for more control. I then pushed the top section into place and held it down on as many contact points as I could with my fingers. I did this for about 5 minutes. With assembly all done, let's talk about the remaining colour choices for the Land Raider Redeemer. Obviously we've chosen to go with the traditional red of the Blood Angels chapter, but even with such a well-established colour scheme, there's still wiggle room for some creative expression. I think it's always worth spending a little bit of extra time to carefully consider your colours and to make sure that each of your colour choices is intentional and that each colour feels like it belongs on the model, in both a visual sense and from a narrative perspective. My first major colour choice after red was black, as it is a colour used on the shoulder pads of Blood Angel Sergeants. I believe it signifies a grizzled veteran status. I also chose gold as it represents an elite status within the Blood Angels chapter. Other colours that were added include Vallejo's skeleton bone on the skulls, the scrolls and the paper on the purity seals. Vallejo's arctic white was applied to the angel's wings on the blood angel's icons and I really went to town on the silver areas using a 50-50 mix of lead belcher and Vallejo chainmail and picking out every rivet and protrusion on the hull. Now there's a point when working on large painting projects when you can begin to get a little stir crazy and this was that point for me. My beard was getting long and unkept, my eyes were straining and I had the urge to paint everything red. <laughs> However, I was both bound to finish this project, so I put down my oversized brush, took a deep breath, and painted on the last rivets of the tank. Here is the final result with all the base coats applied. I really wanted this Land Raider to stand out as one of the chapter's most ancient and awe-inspiring relics, and I think this combination of red, black and gold will help me achieve this. Every Land Raider needs a Tech Marine, and before we go any further with painting the Land Raider, I want to show you this little beaky Tech Marine conversion that I've done. The model itself is over 35 years old and he's made with several different kits, including a Sisters of Battle heavy flamer or heavy melter backpack connected to the hand on a servo arm and having ripping off the head of a Necron with his servo arm. So I thought that's pretty cool. I've named this quaint little old chap Tech Marine Raphael. Uh, finishing painting him is a little outside the scope of this video. So if you want to see him finished in all his glory, then subscribe to the channel or follow me on Instagram, you'll find it on my YouTube banner and I'll post a finished result of Tech Marine Raphael, also known as Wrench Master Rafe by his fellow Battle Brothers. What an absolute legend. I had a lot of fun putting him together. Speaking of legends, GW have regrettably announced that a whole host of firstborn uh, models are going to legends and let's face it, that's where models go to die. Uh, so if I want to keep using him in a tournament scene, I'm going to have to change the base to a Bimera space, lift him up to the equivalent height, and maybe add a axe on his backpack and potentially uh, whatever pistol the Primaris Tech Marine is carrying. I think it's a Grav pistol. So there's still a little bit of conversion work to do, maybe in the future, but for now, he's just beautiful as he is. <sighs> what a champion. Oh, look at him. Beakers are so endearing and adorable. No, please. No. I know that look. I show no no fear. I show no no fear. The Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. The Emperor protects.
With all the base coats done, it was time to slap on some washes. The first was null and oil, which I used on all the silver metal parts on the model. Unfortunately, I ended up with some cloudy white residue in some areas where the null and oil dried, and I had to go back over the troublesome areas with a watered down black paint. Agarax Earthshade was then applied to all the red armour as well as the gold areas, the skulls and the scrolls, and a few select silver metal areas that I wanted to look a bit more grungy, like the tank's tracks. Applying the wash to the red areas so liberally was a mistake, as I only wanted it in all the recessed areas, and it ended up creating blotchy areas on the flat panels that had to be cleaned up with multiple additional layers of Mephiston Red. Of course this is all off camera, but it was really, really annoying. A better choice would have been to carefully paint in the wash to the recessed areas or to use a pin washing technique with an oil based wash. At this point I realised I hadn't painted on the base coats for all the lenses, blood gems and viewing screens on the model, so I went ahead and base coated those areas as well. Not to mention applying a chunky highlight of Evil Sun's red over the entire hull of the tank. As I settled in for a long highlighting session I began to zone out and I started thinking about the Land Raiders machine spirit. For those of you unfamiliar with Land Raider lore, these tanks are ancient relics, many thousands of years old and with exceptionally potent machine spirits. Machine spirits are like a ghost in the shell. The lore intends them to be a kind of AI with a soul. Now according to a decades old schematic of the tank, let's bring it up on screen. The machine spirit of a Land Raider is an M32 Cyclops class battle cogitator. Now that sounds really cool. Cyclops refers to the single lensed camera that sits in the front right hand side of every Land Raider. If you look closely at the schematic itself, you can see that the cogitator resembles a black dome with various cables attached to it. The large single lens camera itself, the Cyclops camera, is mounted directly into the cogitator in the same way that human eyes are connected to the brain. It really gives the impression that the tank is sentient. It's a living being and it's looking and it's taking things in and it's making decisions and even feeling emotions. With the Evil Sun's highlight finished, it was time to add some transfers to the tank. When adding transfers, it's really easy to overdo it, so I tend to go for a minimalist approach. It's a good idea to flick through some reference material to get an idea of which transfers to use and where they might be best placed on your model. And if something doesn't look right once it's on there, it's easy enough to remove it. I carefully chose five transfers and placed them in areas that I believe enhance the overall visual look of the model. Now I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that finds painting certain areas on a miniature more difficult than others. For some people it's the eyes, or maybe it's the skin. For me, it's painting freehand text on Imperial Scrolls. Not only is it a test of patience and skill, but it also forms a very important choice when it comes to the narrative of the model. Whatever you write on that scroll must have narrative importance. It could be something in its history or background. It could be a particular name of a mighty ancestor. It might be the dominant emotion that the character feels. It might be a belief or a value that the model wants to project into the world. You don't just want to write anything on there. A mighty sentient tank needs an appropriate name to match its hostile profile and I've gone with Vindex, which according to Google Translate, means Avenger in Latin. But Techmarine Raphael calls her Vix for short. After practicing with pencil and paper, I settled on a pseudo-Gothic style for the text, and then carefully painted Vindex onto the scroll at the front of the tank, holding my breath at times to keep any caffeine-induced hand tremors down to a minimum. I'm really happy with the freehand scroll work, but I'm not going to show you a finished result until the whole tank is done. While I'm at it, let's just skip several tedious nights of highlighting and detailing work and get straight to the big reveal. Well, almost. We still have to talk about romance in the 41st millennium. We're almost ready for our final reveal. But before we go there, let's talk about Vix, our ancient relic Land Raider Redeemer tank, and her little beaky tech marine, Wrenchmaster Rafe, or tech marine Raphael. When you think about it, these two must have been together for centuries, or maybe even over a thousand years, if you're going to go off tech marine Raphael's armor, which is obviously ancient. 
and the bond between this ancient sentient killing machine and this little old beaky tetmarine attendant must be one of absolute love and trust. Built over centuries of battle, hardship, sacrifice and shared experience. Vix protecting Raphael from harm and Raphael repairing any damage done to his beloved tank. Who said Warhammer lacked any decent love stories? What's even better is one of the rules from 10th edition actually brings this love story to life. Let's read it. Vengeance of the Omnissiah. If a friendly Adeptus Astartes vehicle model is destroyed within 12 inches of this model, until the end of the battle, this model's Omniscient Power Axe has an attack's characteristic of 7. Now, that means that if Vix is destroyed, then Wrenchmaster Rafe is going to go anime, intense, revenge, crazy, and seek vengeance on those who killed his one true love. Oh. I think this is absolutely epic rules writing. It really brings this love story between these two characters to life on the tabletop. This is what it's all about. Strategy and tactics and list building has its place. But putting some passion and thought into your painting and army collecting and then seeing those stories come to life on the battlefield, that's the stuff that's really memorable. It allows you to form an ongoing narrative, a living history for the models that really cements them in the world or universe that they belong in. And you can't ask for anything more than that when you're playing war games. And now we're ready for the big Reveal! Stop. Cut. really happy with how Vix turned out and I can't wait to have her frying some bugs in some future battles against the Tyranids. Now again, if you want to see Tech Marine Raphael painted up into all his glory, then you'll need to subscribe to the channel or follow me on Instagram. You'll see the link on my YouTube banner. Thanks so much for sticking with me to the end of the video. Until next time, paint with passion, fulfill your hobby oaths, and may all your dice rolls be slightly above average. David out. Biggies are so adorable and endearing.